<laughs> I'm Scott, I'm from Frightened Rabbit, from Scotland. <laughs> Yeah, a large difference. I think uh, we've we got we had more resources. I mean, it kind of goes without saying. Atlantic has more money than Fat Cat. Uh, simple as that. And you and you, we find ourselves with more options available as to where we recorded, where we wrote, the way we wrote. You know, like we were able to do it collectively in residence in a couple of houses in Scotland. A great way of working, but totally new to us. So it's changed a lot. You know, it's. Um, and, and it, but, but it hasn't really sort of stultified the creative side of things, so we were pleasantly surprised that it didn't meddle too much in the way we were working, which is great. was a nickname I was given when I was younger. It was, uh, essentially I was just incredibly shy and I would, uh, would dislike being taken along to social occasions, yeah. birthday parties, anything like that. I wasn't really into that. And I would sit in the corner most of the time, struggling to socialise. With the look on the face, very much like a frightened rabbit. All right. Apparently, okay. according to my mum and dad. <laughs> that was almost a challenge. I uh, set myself when I started writing. I had that that title in mind. Comes the the word the sort of couplet itself so it comes from uh, a song called State Hospital, which is on the record. So, um, with that in mind, I was aware that. Anyone would be able to easily jump on crit the critical bandwagon and say you pedestrian verse is fairly fucking pedestrian, you know. And I think what what I tried to do was make it uh, sort of certainly lyrically anything but. So it was a wee challenge to myself. Yeah. And I'd widened the scope of what I was writing about into writing about other people's lives, i.e. pedestrians, and it all kind of relates to that. <laughs> discovered them sort of early last year, to my shame. I was like, oh my god, this band's been around for this long and I haven't even I haven't even listened to the records. And then when I did, I just became a super fan, you know. And so it was kind of got in touch with the magic of Twitter and stuff like that. Was, uh, and then it was just, just came about. They were, they were available, they were interested in doing it. And yeah, it's worked out great. I mean, more than anything as well, you know, like they, they're good people. It's amazing when a great band is also great people because yeah. that's um, on the road you, you, you can't really deal with wankers. No. <laughs> There's no place for them, so they're, they're, they're really, really great to hang out with. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, we don't really have much of a choice either. It's like a good, it's a great place for places like the Sugar Mill. Um, we need to play them, and, and they, they keep the whole touring experience personal. Intimate, interesting. Uh, you know, I don't. I think you know, having played a couple of larger venues on this tour, um, you can lose that connection a little mm. bit. You know, and it's really nice to be able to actually see everyone's faces. Yeah. You know, probably. But it's, um, yeah. I think the preservation is it's hugely important. I think when when venues close down, you give of that size, um, new bands are left with fewer options as well, and that's a shame. You yeah. know, because everyone needs them. Everyone needs the sort of to graduate from, you know, up and up and up.